Okay. There we go. All right. It's taking a while to open. Let me make the last few announcements while this is loading. I've returned, well, yeah. Yeah. I've returned all your papers to you that have been turned in so far, the people who are here. Okay. Uh, it's too late for any others. So if you're not here and haven't turned something in, it's too late, baby. Now it's too late. Okay. All right. Um, we really did try to make it. Never mind. Okay. Next, and the question came up, how, is the test Monday? The test is scheduled for Monday, but I usually this, give this class the option of having a review day, and then after the review day is over with, that's an hour and 50 minutes, not an hour and 15, so we can have review. If you want to take the test Monday, I'll have them made up, and I'll have someone proctor them, unless everybody wants to take them, then I'll proctor them. But if anyone wants to continue the review that we're going to start today, you can do that. And then anytime after that class is over, you can come see me anytime during the week and take the test. You can do it one part or two part because it's a two part test. So uh, it's up to you. That answer to that question. Okay. Now, all the research papers are due in today. Today's the last day of class for this course. So get them to me today if you haven't gotten them to me already. If I get them tomorrow, Friday, or next week, you're losing points. So get them to me today if possible. Otherwise, get them to me as soon as you can. You can, but then I tell students this every time. I have most people who email me papers, they come across great. But not everyone. I've gotten them before that the formatting's off, something. I think if the students would have printed it, they would have seen that. But they didn't, so I have to grade what I receive. So if you're happy with it, Uh, I, okay, I grade, okay, um, you want, well, if I grade it today and it has errors in it from formatting and stuff, those get graded. You bring me that the next day, then either I grade that again with penalty points, see which one you do best in, I'll do that, but you're either going to, yeah, so you can, but I'm going to grade what I get first, and then I, I'm here until technically I'm supposed to leave at 2 today. I know I won't be leaving at 2. It'll probably be more like 515 or later. So just get it to me sometime today. Okay? Everybody, okay? <laughs> All right. So get me the papers today. And um, I guess that, oh, student course evaluations. Has everybody done them? Okay, how long did it take? Five minutes or so. So please do them, folks. Don't put them off. Please do them. If you want to wait till after the final, you can, but please don't forget. Okay? <clears throat> Next, any questions? I return your quizzes and tests to you, so I answer any questions on that, but also on these. Yeah. What's that? Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. I think I put this in the syllabus, too. The final counts, this, it's optional. Okay? No, it, the final is optional, but how I grade it, okay? I grade it and see what your score is. If you score higher on the final than you did on your average coming into the final, I count it as two tests. If you score lower on the final than you did your average coming in, I only count it once, one test. You just count it as a test, but it cannot be dropped. I will drop the lower of your two quiz scores and the lower of your two test scores, but I will not drop the final. I will not drop the paper. Okay, so, so I do it however helps you best. Yeah. On the final, I'll tell you exactly. 30 multiple choice questions like these, there's 100 here, not the same questions but similar, and then eight short answer questions like these, not the same but similar. Okay? All right. The multiple choice counts two points each. That's 40, uh, 60 points. The short answers count eight points each. Yeah. 
Five points each, that's four. So that gives you 100 points. Okay? Say again? Say again how many points in order. Say again? Okay. Short, I mean, the multiple choice, two points each, 30 questions, 60 points for your multiple choice. Your short answer, eight multiple, I mean, short answer questions, five points each, and that'll be 40 points. Okay? On the, on the multiple choice, it's done on Scantron. Okay? I can't count work. I can't count partial credit. You get it right or wrong. I don't like those, but they, it's a departmental and we're stuck with it. On the short answer part, I want you to show all the work that you can, okay? Because I can get partial credit on those five points each for each of the questions and questions, okay? Any other questions? All right, now let's hit some of your questions about the review sheets. I'll answer any you have, and if you don't come up with some, I'll hit some stuff we haven't covered yet. Have any questions? You can use scratch paper, but you've got to turn all paper in, okay? okay? Uh, Jackson, before you leave, pick up your last test. Before you leave, I'm going to continue. Okay. So we, we haven't done graphics, so how about number What's that? Three? Okay, number three. Okay. All right. Good. That was going to be the first one I did, too. Okay, number three, this is, um, let me get my pen activated. <clears throat> this is the comprehensive review multiple choice, number three. Now, they give you a graph of a function, okay? They identify the vertical being the y-axis, horizontal being the x-axis. They label these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And up here they label 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now they're not doing it on this problem, but they labeled them negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and negative 7. And over here, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and negative 7. Hopefully you're familiar with the Cartesian coordinate system. Okay. They draw the graph of this function. That's what F stands for. At 0 is 5. At 1 is 4. At 2 is 3. At 3 is 4 again. At 4 is 5. Now... They're questioning, okay, got it. No, they didn't show any further, they should have. Okay, this is a straight line coming down here, and this is a line here, but it should continue. Okay, that should be the graph of the function. Like I said, one of these is incorrect, this is it. Okay, now, let me explain to you. The question is, what is f of 5? I want to write something down for you. This is called function notation, okay? And here is the most important thing you can remember about function notation. Remember this, y is equal to f of x. If you remember that, you've got most of function covered, okay? So, with that in mind, notice here, and we're asked for what is f of 5. That's what we're looking for. What is f of 5? Well, guess what you do? For x, you put in 5. This is where they mess it up on the thing. And then you find the y that corresponds to that. What is the y value that corresponds to that on that graph? 6. 6, exactly. And you'll see your answer d is listed as 6. And if you look at your um, your answer key, sure enough, is D. Okay, do you see that? This is just like graphing 
you had, I think, those of you who took Math 098, you had graphing there. If you didn't take 098, you did it in high school. You had to have in order to score for this course. So that's how we do it. The only new thing here, Y has equal to F of X. That's the only new thing about the function. That's it. If you know the Y value, you know the F of X at that value, of course. Okay? Does that answer your question? Good deal. Shall we do the next one, please? Number four. Okay? Now, it's the same setup. So, I'm going to take out that part, and the rest of it, I think, is pretty much the same. All right. Two new things about functions, okay? You know how to evaluate them. This one, let's draw this. Someone help me plot this one. Tell me some points to plot. Okay, 0, 3, give it to me as ordered pair, okay? Say again. 1 and 4. 1 and 4, perfect. 2 and 5, perfect. 3 and 6, perfect. Negative 1, 2. Negative 2, 3. Negative 3, 4. Okay, is that it? One more maybe? Negative. No, that's, that's as far as it goes. You're right. Okay. So here's, okay. Now, unfortunately, it looks like it goes a little further. I can't tell. They have a line there, but I can't tell if it meant to or not. Again, this is a little on the sloppy side, uh, but that's what we've got. Now, there is the graph of a function. Y is equal to f of x. The question is, what is the range of that function? Okay? Now, two new words for you. Maybe they're new, maybe they're not. First is domain. That's all the... Okay, let me go back to a function. Y is equal to f of x. Okay? Think of a function as a black box. This is how my calculus professor in college first described it to me. I'd never heard of a function before I was a freshman in college. Okay. Think of it as a black box. Here you got to handle a crank. Okay. What you do with a function, you feed in something, you turn the crank, and it spits out something else. Okay. When he told me that, I immediately thought back of growing up on the farm in the wintertime when we had a hog killing. Okay. And when we did that, they, my dad would be out there. We did all the things outside we did, get all the meat inside. We did the coldest day of the year that we could find because that way the meat wouldn't spoil. And my dad would cut up the, if we had any pork roast or pork chops or ribs or whatever. But any time there was a little scrap of meat that was left over that wasn't in it, he put it in a pile. And that pile kept growing until he had everything cut up. And then we pulled out the sausage grinder. Okay. I remember this well because that was my job. I was too little to do much of anything else. Too dangerous to get me close to a knife, so he had me grind the sausage. So I was the crank, cranker on the sausage. And they would put in the scraps of meat, the spices, the peppers, the sage, the root, whatever they're going to put in there, and I would turn the crank and out would come the sausage. So the input is your x, usually. If y is equal to f of x, Okay, this would be the x going in. The, the crank here is your function. You turn the crank, it does the work, and out comes the y or the f of x, the output value. So think of this as the input value, the output value. Now on the graph, where is your x? The horizontal axis. Now that, all the acceptable members of your x that go in, that's called the domain of the function. Okay? The output values the y, this is called the range. Okay? And in this problem, because you have solid lines here between these points, that means every value represented. 
If you just have the points, those would just be the integers. But you have the lines in between as well. Notice they didn't even pick out the points. You pick those out for me. All right. Did we have finishing this? Okay. All right. So the domain of this function would be from, and I can't tell this for sure, but from negative 4 to 3, because those are the input values, right? Okay? The range of the function would be what? From 2 to 6. All the values, that, and it's every value between 2 and 6. So they ask here for the range of the function. Oh, this is question number four. Okay, and they ask for the range of f of x. Okay, now generally they give these in two different ways. Set notation would be this. Let me give you the domain first. Domain would be the set of all possible x values because that's the x is the domain such that, that's what this line means, negative 4 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 3. That's the set notation. In interval notation, which the book likes, but we're not doing any more in the book, I think the exam will be more like this. It would be a bracket, meaning you include the last entry, negative 4 to 3. Every value between those. So you tell me what you think the range is. Set of all possible, what are your output values? Y such that 2 less than or equal to, no, Y, which is also less than or equal to 6. That is your answer. Okay. They, so this is the other one that was wrong. The first one, the graph was wrong. The second one, the answer was wrong. So it should be six. It should be six because it obviously goes to six. Right? Should be six. Uh, and I think, yeah, four, they say it's C, and that should be a six there, not a five. Okay. Okay, look at the y value. None of these have a y value for that. None here until you get there. And the 2 is included in everything above that up to 6. Yeah. Now, here's the other way I think of this. I don't know if it helps you, but it's how I think of it. I imagine for the domain that you have a very bright light somewhere way up there, shining down. Here's the graph. Anywhere the shadow comes, that's your domain. You know, shadow doesn't come here, the light shows here and here, but this blocks it so you have the shadow between here and there. So that's your domain. Have a very bright light either over here or over there, I don't care which, and you might need to move the axis over here, but shine the light, what is going to be blocked? So this will be blocked, this will be blocked, this will be blocked, everything between 2 and 6 will be blocked by that function. So that's the range. Okay? Does that make sense? That's most of what you need to know about functions. Okay? We're going to do two sections of them. You've evaluated functions, you grasped functions, or you told me the values of them, and then you found the means and range. Are there going to be a lot of questions about your students? I don't know if there's a lot, no, because there are only two sections that were to be covered. Not many questions out of that. There probably will be a one or two, but that's probably about it. Anything else? Number nine, also multiple choice. Okay. All right, this is the another one we didn't get to. Okay. This is same task, everything, number nine. Determine the slope and y-intercept of this equation. Y is equal to negative 2.666. Someone help me count. 6, 6, 6, 7, x plus 6.6. .6. They like their 6s, don't they? Okay. 
determine the slope and the y-intercept. The symbol for slope is m, y-intercept. Often we call it b. We just call it that, okay? Now, what's your slope? Again, this is calling from NAVO 98 or high school. You should have done slope. Say again. Okay. Here is where they're coming from. The point slope, I'm sorry, the slope intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b. There is the slope intercept form of an equation. If you can get an equation into that form, how do you do that? Solve for y. Do whatever it takes to get y by itself, a naked y over here, everything else over there, then you have slope intercept form. And right here you can tell the slope is, as you were saying, go ahead, negative 2.6666667. And what's your y intercept? 6.6. .6. Actually, I like to put y intercept as 0. 6.6. .6. Why would I do that? Say again? Yes, because, yeah, on the y-axis, the x value is always 0. So if you're intercepting at 6.6, .6, the x value is 0 and the y value is 6.6. .6. If they ever ask for an x-intercept, guess what, how you find it? Set y equals 0 and then solve for x. But you see, in slope-intercept form, so easy to find. Say so x equals 0, this whole term goes out, there's your y-intercept. B, 6.6. .6. Y is equal 6.6. .6. So, how did they answer it here? They answer... Oh, there it is, number 9. The slope, yeah, they just put, they don't put it as ordered pair. Looks like they have number A. Did they get it right? Number 9A. They got it right. Good for them. Okay. Any others? Say again. 8. Okay. We'll back up 1 to 8. Determine the degree of this polynomial. Negative 13x cubed plus 19x squared minus 3xy squared minus 6x squared y plus 8x to the fourth. What in the world do we mean by degree? What's this temperature? No, that's not it. What do we mean by degree? What do we mean by degree? Say again. Uh, we did in the polynomial chapter, I think. We talked about it anyway. We talked about it when we were talking about, um, no, that was my other class, sorry. Okay. Here's what it is. It's the maximum exponent that you have in the expression. This term has a 3, so so far that's the max. That one has a 2, 3 still winning. This one has Notice if you don't see an exponent, you understand it to be 1. So 1 and 2, that would be 3. So still 3 is winning. This one would be 3. So still 3 is winning. Until you get to the end, 4. So that degree is 4. Okay? And that should be B. Did they get it right? Good for them. Okay. What's that? Number 7. Okay, determine the degree of each each term in the polynomial. Okay, do you now need to write it down or can? Okay, do, do, does anyone need me to write that down? Okay, number seven. Goodness gracious. Okay, number seven. 16 K cubed M plus 72k squared m squared plus 81k m cubed. It says, what is the degree of each term in the polynomial? Degree of this one? 4? 
This one. Four. Four, four, four. They like fours in this problem. Any of those correct? It looks like A is, doesn't it? And number seven, sure enough, it's eight. Good for them. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes. Any others? So again, ten? All right. Good question. Sort of hoping someone's going to ask that one. Okay. All right. You pick me out some points here. Okay. Um, it looks like, I'll, I'll pick out one. It looks like 2 1 is 1. 2 1. Okay. It looks like 0 5 is 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's another one you said? Okay. 0, something short of 1 or 2. Something in there. Wait, what? Y'all awake yet? Okay. Okay, what did you say? Uh, zero five. Do you mean? Looks like maybe zero, negative three, or a little past negative three down there, right? Right? Pick out some that go right through the points. Looks like maybe one four might do it, wouldn't it? Looks like maybe negative two seven. Okay, that's as far as I can go there. Looks like a one negative two might work too. I don't know. Okay. And maybe another negative two. Uh, negative two, negative five. Yeah, I think that may be close. Okay. Now, let's see, are there any others? I, um, I can't tell. This is sort of what that curve looks like. I don't draw curves very well. Okay. That's sort of what it looks like. Now, it says, here's the one other thing you need to know about a function. Okay? Got this one. The definition of a function for every input, remember that's your x, you can only have one y. Think of this. You're down in the bookstore buying a bag of potato chips, right? The person ahead of you has the same brand, the same size, same everything bag of potato chips. In fact, he picked them off the shelf just before you did. Got them from the same place. You will go through and they charge him $1.99. And you put yours down there and they charge you $2.99. Are you a happy camper? No way, okay? Because for the same input, there are different outputs. You can't have that in a function. Look at this one. You think that's a function? Give me an X, maybe zero. There's an answer. There's an answer. No, can't be. Now, for graphs of functions or graphs, it's really easy to tell whether a graph represents a function or not. It's a test called the vertical line test. If you can draw any vertical line that intersects more than once, not a function. There's a line, there's a line, there's a line. There's tons of lines that intersect twice. So this one here, that's a function. Those beads we had, those were functions. This, not a function. Okay? On a graph, the vertical line test tells you whether it's a function or not. A vertical line crosses the graph more than once, not a function. Now, of course, there's no, no drop crosses out here, and only one cross right there, but every place else, there's two or more, two crosses. Okay? This would be a function. That would be a function. That would not be a function. Okay? Draw your vertical lines there. If you had a graph like this, vertical line only crosses at once. Okay? All right, so that should be an A. Number 10 should be A, and it is. Good for them. 
Any others? 11. Okay. I know we did this one, but it's fine to do. Okay, let me clear this off the screen. Number 11. Divide 4x to the 7th plus 12x to the 8th plus 20x to the 9th by or divided by negative 4x squared. How would you do that? Like it's written? No way. I would put this over it. I would do this and divide this way. That is also a dividing line. Right? Okay. Now you divide term by term. That's because this is a monomial. If that's a binomial, we have more work to do. Okay? Or a trinomial or anything else. Monomial is easy. In fact, if you want to, you can write it this way. 4x to the 7th over negative 4x squared plus 12x 8th over 4x squared plus 20x to the 9th over 4x squared. Those are minus 4, by the way. Okay? What I suggest, deal with the numbers first. What's 4 divided by negative 4? Negative 1. I'm just going to put a minus. What's x to the 7th divided by x to the 2nd? x to the 5th. Next? At negative 3x6. Perfect. Minus 5x to the 7th. Perfect. Does everybody see that? How they got those numbers? Okay, let's see if they have an answer here. They wrote the 1 in there, silly them. Okay, it looks like A to me, doesn't it? Let's see if number 11 is A. Yes, it is. Good for them. Make sense? Anyone not see it? Okay, any others? Number 2. Backing up to number 2. I forgot to put the number down for that. What was that, 11? Okay. Number two. Oh, boy, he loves these. Okay. Okay. A retailer finds that the total cost per day are given by C is equal to 49 times the square root of n plus 121, where c is the cost and n is the number of units sold. Okay. What is c when no units are sold? That's the question. Guess what we would do? Plug in a zero for n. What's the square root of it? Zero. The square root of zero? Zero. 49 times zero? 49 times zero? 49 times zero? Zero. Okay, I can't hear. So what's your cost? 121 bucks. That's what it costs even if they don't sell a single item. It's going to cost them $121. Let's see if that's the answer. 121 is C. Number two is C. Good for them. That means even if you don't sell anything, you still got to pay the electricity, the rent, the, you know, whatever. Your employees, whatever. It's going to cost you even if you don't sell a thing. Okay? And answer that. Any others? Number 12. Top of page 3. Oh, by the way, that was number 2. Okay? Number 12.
divide and simplify. I know we've done these. I think we have, haven't we? y cubed minus 7y over y squared minus 49 divided by y squared plus 8y minus 9 divided by y squared plus 6y minus 7. How would you proceed? Okay, factor everything in sight. I like it. That first numerator, what can you factor? And what do you have left? Nope. Y squared? Nope, that's a 7, isn't it? Minus 7. Okay, how about that first denominator? Y plus 7 times Y minus 7. Very good. Okay, now you got a couple of choices here. For people who are really lazy like me, I want to invert before I factor. But if you need to factor first and then invert, you can. It's all right to invert and factor at the same time? Or is that too confusing? Huh? I said do it step by step. Do it step by step, okay? We'll keep it a division then. And what could we do with the first one? The numerator of the second term. Y plus something and Y minus something. He's on top. No, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You're right. And what? Plus 9 minus 1. I think that'll work, won't it? Next. Y plus and Y minus. He's got it on the ball. Y minus 1 and Y plus 7. Got it. Now, what do you do next? Now we invert. So keep the first one the same, y times y squared minus 7 divided by y plus 7 times y minus 7 times what goes here? Or y plus 7. You can do it the other way too if you want. y minus 1 over y plus 9, y minus 1. Now what do you do? Divide anything out you can. And what do you see you can divide out? Say again. Y plus 7 here and there. Y minus 1 there and there. Actually, you could have done that in the first step. That's fine. Or second step. Okay, that's all I can see that you can do. If I copied the problem right, that's it, folks. So what do you got as an answer? y times y squared minus 7 divided by y minus 7 times y minus 9. Can you do anything else to simplify? Please say no. No, you can only divide out things multiplied. What's that? Is it? Yeah, you're right. I can't read. Okay. Got it. Okay. Let's see if they got anything close to that. They made the same mistake. No, they cut close. Okay. Looks like number C is what they got. Is C the answer? Yes, I believe so. Number 12, C, good for them. Excellent. It's time. Oh, how sad. Now, let me know. Right now, you want to have another review period Monday? Yes. Okay. If anyone wants to take the final, I'll have it ready for you. But uh, otherwise, we'll have a review period in here. Well, we'll, I'll prob we'll probably stay in here for the review period and find the classroom like right next door or something like that. For those who want to take the final. So, it's review Monday, that means I'll have to be Whenever time you want to take it. From any time after you finish the review. Yeah, you start on like Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday afternoon, Thursday. Guess what, folks? You cannot take it on Friday because Friday I'm out of town. So you have to have it finished by Thursday afternoon. 8 o'clock in the evening. No later than that. Good deal. Thank you so much.
Yeah. Or yeah. Well, yeah. end of the day, that's fine. I'll be here till at least five fifteen, I think. Probably later. Huh? Oh yeah. I passed it out, but you weren't in. Okay. You yeah, turn in the paper. I had to print my paper. Oh, you did. Okay. Okay. Let me. Thank you. Otherwise, I won't.